are still hopes for a Missouri Valley Conference regular season title. But all those hopes fade away if Southern cannot take care of business tonight at the arena. Good evening, everyone. I'm Russ Eisenstein. Alongside is Donnie Tillman. It's Southern Illinois University and the Bradley University Braves. Yes, Donnie, there are still hopes, but Creighton must lose. Southern must win. That's a tall order. Exactly right. Bradley's here. They have to, they're playing upset, trying to beat Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois still wants a shot at winning the conference crown. They'll have to win here tonight if they want any chance, while Creighton, on the other hand, just has to beat Drake, and they are the Valley champ. So Southern has to hope for a little luck today, Russ. Yes, Drake is uh, not much of a favorite in the ball game in Omaha. Southern Illinois won at Indiana State, 84-74 on Saturday. The big three was big, but Jermaine Dearman was the biggest. Exactly. He just outplayed everyone else. 16 points and a career high, Valley high this season. 18 rebounds and helping Southern overcome Indiana State comeback and win to set up this final game between the two top teams to decide who's going to win the Valley tonight. Bradley has five wins in the Missouri Valley Conference, 8-18 eight and 18 overall. They do have some talented players, and one of them, a guard, Philip Gilbert. Exactly. J Gilbert is averaging 14 points a game. Usually he comes off the bench. Tonight he will start against Southern Illinois, so SIU has to watch out for Gilbert. He can put some points up on the board for Bradley. And there is some inside intensity. Southern out muscles and outweighs Bradley. They have to flex it inside with Jermaine Dearman and Roland Roberts. Exactly. Roland is the man in the middle. He's the one that uh, dictates what goes on. They'll need big play from him tonight as they take on Bradley. It's SIU and Bradley from the arena in Carbondale. The lineups in the ballgame are next. Welcome back to the SIU Arena in Carbondale. It's SIU and the Bradley Braves. The dogs are 23 and 6, 13 and 4 within the Missouri Valley Conference. Bradley is 8 and 18, 5 and 12 within the Missouri Valley Conference, trying to avoid the Friday playing round of the Missouri Valley Conference tournament. The implications of this ball game are simple. If SIU wins and Creighton loses, the dogs have their first regular season championship in the Missouri Valley Conference since 1992 in Carbondale opposite of the University Mall. Let's meet the starters first for the Bradley University Braves. They'll go this way. Reggie Hall, Mike Suggs, Michael Stewart, James Gillingham, and Philip Gilbert. Gilbert is the X-Factor in the ballgame. One of the leading scorers in the Missouri Valley Do Conference. Donnie averages 14 points per ball game. Exactly. He's a threat off the bench. He can score points in an instant. And Lee Southern Hall, have to Joe play Del tight Fonzo defense. The not allow him to get arena, off here. The, the starters are Southern here Illinois. Here Jermaine Dearman, Stetson Harris, the departing Roberts, seniors. Marcus Belcher and, and Kent Williams. Kent Williams is the number three scorer in the Missouri Valley Conference. Averages 15.9 points per ball game. Starting exactly. lineups come down for to the like tonight's ballgame. That's going to be Kent, Roland, and Jermaine. That is going to be counted on to help SIU come out with another victory here at SIU Arena tonight. Five and 12 on the conference. They are introducing the seniors, and the Bradley Braves take the floor here at the arena in Carbondale. The seniors for Southern Illinois. And uh, James Gillingham, Marcus will Belcher, start the guards, Roland Roberts, Danny Granger, and Jason Ward, Philip Gilbert, and, and Tyrese Bowie for Southern Kirk. Illinois. Bradley had two seniors, but the keys tonight. early tonight, Donnie, are going to be flex the muscle Illinois, inside. It's exactly. Marcus Belcher, He's come down Belcher to Roland, Roland Roberts, Roberts, Roberts and shots, and Jermaine Dearman. Low post game, he'll have to go up against Brad, Bradley's uh, center, Stetson and Danny Granger. And we'll have the first we'll half action tonight's right after this from the arena right in Carbondale at Southern Illinois and the Bradley University Braves from the arena. Right now, our national anthem. Bradley is 8 and 18 overall, 5 and 12 within the Missouri Valley Conference. And we're back Valley at SIU Arena. 23 and 6, 13 and 4. The fastest tonight. team in Saluki history to get the 20 wins overall. Series <laughs> notes, might have more Jim Molinari is 12 and 13 well, against Southern uh, Illinois University, including a 12 and 12 mark against the Saluki's as Bradley's head coach. Jim Molinari is in his 11th season in Peoria. He's defended the NCAA tournament five times, and rather the NIT five times, and one time in the NCAA tournament back in 1996. Chris returned. Weber is a head coach for Southern Illinois University. Southern Illinois He's two and to, uh, six against Jim Molinari and one and two well. here at home. Uh, Coming into the ball game the tonight, the fourth year head coach for Southern Illinois is 74 and 45. Here, and uh, the real mark of 62% uh, win percentage. Uh, the graduate Wisconsin right. Milwaukee. Yeah, they're, He's they're in his fourth for year in Carbondale. Simply put, the end of the year is always a time to make your mark, and the question will always remain. If Southern does win the ball game, Creighton loses. Does Southern have a fighting chance to get an the right in the NCAA tournament. tournament. Well, they've tried to do it, but wins, well, and, Bruce Weber, and it's come down to, uh, like you said, the final game of the season. Hopefully, well, Southern uh, can get a win here, and then they can make Luke the McDonald selection a lot harder for the committee when it comes down to the side. Maybe make the final the six to Drake is taking on the Drake Bulldogs tonight. That's in Omaha. Drake is 8-9 and in the Missouri Valley Conference. They are tied with the dogs are 
we're about to be introduced here tonight. Wichita State and Northern Iowa. 13 and four. Loser of that three team battle. A win will fall tonight down to the round tie in the three best best finish in the Missouri Valley Drake Conference is 13 history. 14 for the and 14 and for the ball game in back in the 91 92 season and the 93 94 season under Rich Harris. Great to finally pull it away. Plus a victory with Kevin Drake to get an all record at home. That's only been done one time, and that was the 1965 66. Not too many people have much success at home as well. So a lot of things on the line tonight for the home team, there. and they've been playing very well all season. So there's no reason like I said, it's they think that the train should stop team tonight. Struggled this year. Well, certainly, Southern comes into the ballgame after an 84-74 win at the Holman Center in Terre Haute. Wow. On Saturday afternoon, the Dodgers were led with 23 points by Roland Roberts, but the big story was Jermaine Dearman. 16 points and 18 rebounds. He can score at will and rebound at will against the team from his home state. Exactly, and not too many Sycamore fans like him. He in eighth right place. He's They're just been able to have great games against Indiana State in the past three games, especially with the two come from behind, come from behind and game-winning shots and then just last uh, Saturday this past Saturday rather just was able to do whatever he wanted down in the hole Bradley comes into the ball game after an embarrassing loss on senior day at Carver Arena in Peoria 80 to 64 the Blue Jays of Creighton got the victory at halftime it was 35 23 tied up at 21 but then Drake rather Creighton went on a 34 21 run to really ice the ball game the story three points for Creighton they were five of ten in the first half seven of nine in the second half that's a big time total of 12 of 19 and Creighton's an outstanding ball club and you cannot get far behind and Bradley did now we have to talk about Bradley slumping and not playing for very much here in this ball game tonight last ball game of the regular season they will play on Friday in the playing round of the Valley Tournament Donnie exactly but a limping dog is always a dangerous one Russ Bradley's the underdog here at SIU Arena there they're not favored SIU is and those are the teams that you have to watch out for because they'll get up for this game thinking, what do they have to lose? And they might come out and actually play hard against Southern Illinois. They're not just going to roll over. Marcello Robinson is in the starting lineup now for the Bradley Braves. They call him Cello. He's from Kankakee. He's a sophomore. Don's number four. Gillingham out there. Gilbert. And also Brian Brandon Kingskirk, a freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's a center. He's seven foot. He is a freshman. Southern Illinois! It will be Roland Roberts going up for the jump for Southern Illinois against Danny Granger, one of the taller players for Bradley. The tip is controlled by Bradley. They will move from right to left. I'm Russ Eisenstein. Alongside is Donnie Tillman. This is Saluki Basketball on WSIU, WUSI, the Braves of Bradley and Southern Illinois. That's Danny Granger at the top of the key. He has the ability to move out and step the jumper. Jermaine Dearman on him in the man-to-man -man defense. James Gillingham, one of their more prolific scores, throws it up from 15 and buries it. We have points in Carbondale, two to nothing. Bradley with the advantage. Exactly, they came out early. They want to get this game at their tempo. They like to play a slow style tempo, whereas Southern Illinois would like to control the tempo themselves, but they're more of an up style tempo. Southern won the ball game, 55-49 at Carver Arena in Peoria, a place that not too many people win at. And Williams for three, banking no rebound, pulled down by Stetson Harris, and had the ball tipped away. Here comes Bradley flying up the court. Exactly, if that game in Peoria came down to a big shot by Marcus Belcher to help seal the deal for Southern Illinois. This kid's going to be a good one. Danny Granger buries a 17-foot jumper. He's 6'8", he's a freshman. He's from Mattery, Louisiana. 4-0. Bradley with the advantage early. The club of Bradley's, they're pretty young starting-wise, but... They have a lot to look for in the coming years. This is a rebuilding year for Jim Molinari, but he is under heat in Peoria. Roland Roberts, the senior, working against two. Southern's going to deal with double and triple teams down low all night. Stetson here has been traveled. That's a turnover. 18.33 to go, just starting the ball game. Bradley up 4-0 on Southern Illinois. And yes, Donnie, it was a ball game up in Peoria that was, for lack of a better word, ugly. And Southern finally pulled it out with taking their first lead at the four-minute mark in the second half. Exactly. That second half at Bradley was, was almost hard to watch for us. There were a few field goals in the second half, and luckily Southern was able to come away with the victory there. Roland Roberts stuck his big paw up, blocked Danny Granger's shot. Marcus Belcher glides to the goal, a whistle and a foul on the Braves. So Marcus will go to the line, a senior out of Mexico, Missouri. The foul on Philip Gilbert. Gilbert out of East St. Louis. Stepped into that program after Darius Miles left. Darius now playing for the Los Angeles Clippers. There you see the, the foul right there. Coach Weber wants Marcus to be a little bit more 
offensive minded. You know, he passes the ball a lot, but he wants them to take a couple of shots and maybe drive to the hole a little more. From the line this season, Southern woeful, 61%. Marcus Belcher misses the first. From the line this year, he's 71%, one of the better shooting Salukis from the line. But free throws have been the difficulty for Southern and have cost the dogs a couple of ball games late. And also that's what could cost you in the, in the national tournament or the NCAA tournament. Free throws are key in the game, and if you miss them and the other team makes them, it's going to put you in a very difficult situation. Four to one, Bradley with the advantage. Roland Roberts is everywhere defensively, has been all year, couldn't save it inbounds. It will be Bradley basketball inbound in front of the scorer's table. He's definitely the anchor of the defense back there blocking shots. Even if a man gets past one of the guards or a forward, he's back there to contest the shot and try and get that block shot record. Bradley's offensive style is slow. It has been slow ever since Bradley hired Jim Molinari 11 seasons ago. Marcello Robinson over to Philip Gilbert. He'll pull on the baseline and got it. Rather, James Gillingham from 15 feet, and Bradley takes an early 6-1 to one lead. This is surprising. The Braves have come out shooting, and Southern's cold from the floor. Belcher to try to heat it up, does it? Kingsburg on the rebound, and here come the Braves. The Braves just seem to be ready for this game, where Southern's still trying to get their feet, maybe warm up a little bit. This is a young ball club. And you question what they're playing for at the end of the season. It can be very easy for a ball club that's 8-18 eight and 18 to just kind of fall away. Kent Williams won't. And he misses on the bank. Rebound long to Stetson Harrison. And the first-year player out of St. Louis misses the jumper, but a third chance for Southern. And Kent Williams makes it good. 6-3, Southern trails by three. They never could on that. Even though they missed the first two shots, they still got rebounds and were able to get the third one to go win. As a ball club, this is one of the worst offensive outputs uh, Bradley is in the Missouri Valley Conference. Scoring offense, they're 10. Last in the Missouri Valley, they average 60 points per ball game. Philip Gilbert buries the three. Check that Marcello Robinson from the top of the key. The sophomore buries it. It's 9-3, to three. Bradley with the lead. It doesn't appear they're the worst offense right now, Russ. 10 to answer, cannot, and Heemskirk on the rebound. The seven-foot freshman will be playing a lot against the taller Timbers tonight of Roberts and Dearman for SIU. Danny Granger off the assist try from James Gillingham. He's fouled. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Two substitutions will come in for Southern. The first appearance of Sly Willis and Darren Brooks. At the line for Bradley. Foul on Southern is whistled on Roland Roberts. Granger shooting two. So Danny Granger will go to the line to shoot two for Bradley. And Bradley does like to shoot free throws. They're one of the better free throw shooting teams in the Valley. Into the ball game for the Sookies, number one, Darren Brooks. So Sly will check in for the dogs, and Jermaine Dearman will have a seat. Marcus Belcher will sit down, and Darren Brooks in the lineup. The redshirt freshman out of St. Louis. Granger for the second, and he made it. 11 to three, Bradley with an eight point advantage. Southern was stuck in the mud offensively in Peoria, but both teams were in that ball game in early January, Donnie. Exactly, but it'll be different here, and you don't want Southern to get stuck, and Bradley continuing to shoot like this, Southern might be in trouble tonight. Darren Brooks, kick off to Stetson Harrison. Southern playing loose offensively, but no success in the hole. Roberts deep was bumped and a foul before the travel. Take your pick on Heemskirk or Danny Granger. And it will be on Brandon Heemskirk, the freshman from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Just ahead of our media timeout, 11 to three, Bradley with the advantage on Southern. Southern stuck in the mud early on. Sly doubled up and is forced to kick it out. This is what Bradley wants to do, a very defensive ball club. Jim Molinari would have it no other way. A whistle and a foul, and they're gonna get Heemskirk again for a push-off, and that's a problem because the seven-foot freshman is one of the few players that can guard Roland Roberts and Jermaine Dearman down low. We'll take an official timeout, 15.52 for the ball. 748. Again, that's 1 800 745 9748. Bradley leads this series 35 to 22. The last meeting was a Southern win 55 49 at Carver Arena in Peoria. Not too many teams go into Carver and win, but this year was their first under 500 season yeah, since they moved into the arena back in the 82 83 season. This is the first losing season since 91 92 for Bradley at home. Two and seven.
They were that year. This year, they are 6-7 and seven at Carver Arena. They played their final home game against Creighton the other night. And yes, Bradley is the X Factor in this. They lost to Creighton. Now they could spoil Southern hope, Southern's hopes for a Valley Tournament Championship or Valley Regular Season Championship with a win here in Carbondale, Donnie. Exactly. And also, Bradley has to think one, they want to go into the tournament on a win as well. You get hot in the tournament, you can get that automatic bid into the, turn, into the NCAA field. Ted Williams fires out of the timeout. 11-5, Southern trails by six. They need to get him hot. He's the third leading scorer in the Missouri Valley Conference. Averages 15.9 points per ball game. Exactly, Russ. And also, you always see Southern Illinois. They always come out with a nice scoring effort out of a timeout. Philip Gilbert. Newcomer of the year last year in the Valley, blocked away by Southern. The Dogs are coming to the front court. This is one you want to see out of a timeout, some intensity. The feed to Roberts, catches and throws, misses. Weak side rebound pulled down by Reggie Hall and Danny Granger. Marcello Robinson will come down with the uh, front court for Bradley. Fans not happy. They thought maybe a foul should have been called there. Reggie Hall in the lineup now for the Braves. One of the few seniors, only two seniors. He catches in the low post. Right hand hook blocked away by Rowan. Seed in the corner, get it back down to Granger. Muscles off the glass and got it. Danny Granger, the freshman of Mattaree, Louisiana. Grace King High School down there in the bayou. Flexes against Rowan. It's 13-5 Bradley. Exactly. Rowan came up with the big block shot, but then they were able to get the, the deflection back, and Granger went up for the easy two. Sly Willis to Kent Williams in the lane. Blocked away by James Gillingham. And Bradley's everywhere defensively. The fans wanted the foul, but from our vantage point, it was a clean block. Can't yell at the referee like he wanted the foul call as well. And now they're going to get a push-off foul on Stetson Harrison in front of the SIU bench. Linking bad possessions is not good early on. 14-17 for the first half. Southern trails 13-5. Joe Tucker into the ball game for the Braves. Freshman out of Nicolette High School in Milwaukee. 6'5", 210. Sitting down is Philip Gilbert for Bradley. See what they can do offensively without their stud on the floor. And they travel is what they do. Turnover, Southern will have it. Length over four to go. That's what Southern wants to do. They want to come out with the, and show a little defensive pressure. Put the big man out now. Maybe they can score some points to get back into this game down early. Very uncharacteristic of the Bradley Ball Club to have this big of a lead in the first half. They are the lowest scoring offense in the league, averaging 60 points per ball game. Darren Brooks trying to heat things up. Goes up against three. Double dribble turnover. Fans unhappy with the officiating thus far. Bruce Weber unhappy as well, the fourth year head coach for SIU. Jermaine Deerman back in the lineup. Roland Roberts will check out. Tyrese Bowie, the senior transfer out of junior college from Savannah, Georgia, checks in for SIU at the 13.56 mark. A little sloppy play the last couple of plays. Teams are turning it over with kind of dribbling problems out there, Russ. Joe Tucker plays it to Danny Granger. They'll circle the perimeter. Slow down style, not to the favor of many Bradley fans in Peoria. Danny Granger from 17. He buried it. Danny Granger is six points early on, and the Braves lead by 10, 15-5. Jermaine Dearman to answer. He does. 15-7. That's what you want your player of the week to do, to be able to answer back and keep the Salukas in the game where they seem to struggle right now. You would like to, but unfortunately, it has to be J.D. from 17 feet instead of down low. Brad Korn will check in on the next dead ball for SIU. It's cello to the hot hand, Danny Granger. This is a freshman, folks, from Metairie, Louisiana. He has eight, and Bradley's up by 10 again, 17 to 7. It appears Bradley is the team that actually came out ready to play, and Southern's just kind of going along with the motions right now, not really doing anything spectacular. Ted Williams, the junior from Mount Vernon, penetrates and kicks to Tyrese Bowie. His mid-range jumper is, is his specialty, and Bradley knows it. Back to J.D., he misses from 10 feet. Rebound pulled down by Cello for Bradley. Tried to take another jumper there, but couldn't get that to fall. The Southern Stover continues to struggle offensively this is so far this game. Southern steps out in that man-to-man -man defense. Sly Willis helps up top. On the baseline, it's Granger. Charging foul. Kent Williams, good position down low, but schooled the freshman in how to take a charge. 
John Bradley. That's team foul number one on Danny Granger. The fourth team foul for the Braves. Radcorn will check in for the dogs, and yeah, it appeared that Kent kind of just slid in there and got his possession and got his feet under him. Take the charge, Johnny. Exactly. Like I said, that's a veteran junior right there taking the charge, trying to do something to spark a spark something for his team. Kent Williams would like to spark things. It does off the bank. Wanted a foul there from James Gillingham. Could it get it? Southern tips it down to eight now. Bradley leads 17-9. You've seen Kent make plays like that all season, get banged around and make tough shots, as he did right there. The second senior for Bradley, Brian Hogue, is in the lineup. Has had limited time in his four years on the hilltop in Peoria. But in there now, an eight-point Bradley lead. Slicing is Richie Hall, blocked away by Jermaine Dearman, and an offensive foul. Bradley, they'll get Bradley's other senior, Reggie Hall, the fifth year senior out of Chicago's Providence St. Mel. 17 to 9. The under 12 timeout comes at 11.40. Braves lead by eight. This is Saluki basketball on WSIU, WUSI. Sticks at the arena on Thursday night. 17 to 9. Bradley has the advantage early on in this ballgame, and they've shot the ball very well. 60% from the floor, as opposed to Southern shooting a frigid 33% from the floor, Donnie. Exactly. It's Bradley who's been coming out shooting with the hot hand. You normally don't see that, like we talked about before. They're a defensive-minded team. And as we'll see right here, see Bradley just continuing to drive into the hole, try, try drive into the hole, trying to get easy baskets, but they Southern was able to draw a foul there, and they have the ball now as they try to cut into this deficit 63 percent Bradley is shooting southern 33 that replay you saw was a charge by Reggie Hall the fifth year senior out of Chicago Marcus Belcher junior college transfer nearly slips gives it to JD down low and they'll double and triple team you all night in the low post nearly a travel no call Brad Korn for three no nobody there for Bradley on the rebound try and it will be brave basketball at the length of the floor to go. This is a ball club that's 8 and 18. They will play in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament on Friday, the play-in round at the Savage Center in St. Louis. Southern trying for their first league title in regular season since 92. Brian Hogue, the second senior on the floor for Bradley in the travel. Bill Gilbert, second year player out of East St. Louis, lost the handle. Saluki basketball down by eight at 10.56. Last four possessions down for Bradley now. They've had two travels and two offensive fouls. So Southern has turned up the defensive intensity, but on the offensive side, they've still continued to struggle. Marcus Belcher to Darren Brooks. They'll play pitch and catch up top against a solid 2-3 zone by Bradley. Something that Jim Molinari has started to implement in Peoria is a defensive coach. Always has been. Coached it to Paul under Ray Meyer. There's JD for a jumper from 10 that he misses. Joe Tucker on the rebound. And here come the Blake Braves flying into the front court and they'll slow it down. Run that Mo style offense. And Russ on that last possession by SIU. You didn't see any white jerseys down low to go for the rebound. Reggie Hall lost the handle out of bounds. It will be dog ball with the length of the floor to go. They'll try to dump it down low as long as Rowan Roberts is not on the floor for Southern. Checking back in for the Ken Williams will check back in for the dogs. Ken Stetson Harris had also checked back in for Southern. And we talked about tempo earlier, and so far it's been Bradley who's dictated the type of tempo. It's been a slow, non fast paced game. Southern hasn't been able to run and get fast breaks and get dunks or anything like that. Marcus Belcher takes a Stetson Harrison pick out high. Try to feed it down low against an undersized and under-muscled ball club of Bradley Braves. However, they have not do it, done it through the first half of the first half. Bradley stepping it up defensively. Mart Eric coached at Northern Illinois. Took the Huskies to the NCAA tournament back in 1991. Has been in Peoria for 11 years. Foul away from the basketball. Reggie Hall will pick up his second personal foul. Bradley continues to play that zone, and they, it seems like every time Southern tries to dump the ball down there, they either tip the ball or try and strip it away, and it's just causing all type of problems right now for SIU, and so far, Bruce Weber hasn't figured out a way to solve those problems. Rowan Roberts checks back in. Jermaine Dearman will check out. Brandon Heemsburg back in for Bradley. So the seven-footer against Rowan, the Virginia Tech transfer. And they immediately go down low, and Southern wins that battle. You figure they will against Teamsburg, who has two fouls. Dogs trail by 6, 17, 11. 
Exactly. He and Stark is a big guy, but when you have Roland on the floor and he has two fouls, so he doesn't want a foul, it's a good matchup for Roland. James Dillingham to Danny Granger, who leads the Braves with 10 points. A whistle and a foul on Southern. Granger had the quick step there, but he drew the foul. Brad Korn, the redshirt sophomore out of Plano, picks up his first personal foul. Team foul number three on Southern Illinois. Marcello Robinson to inbound for the Braves, who lead by six. Danny Granger hot, stays hot, has 12. Braves up by eight, 19-11. Quick move by Granger. He got down, got the ball, looked for a second, and just went up and put the shot up. One of their prized recruits in the recruiting class they sorely needed. Brad Korn for three. No. Long three by Brad Korn, but wasn't able to knock that one down. It's the second one he's missed. Whistle and a foul into the front court. And they'll get Southern. Marcus Belcher will pick up the personal foul. Bradley is a slow down offense, but they will run and transition. Saw a weak spot in that Southern defense and started to move it down the floor. Exactly. Marcus tried to come from behind and shook the ball, but he grabbed a piece of the person with the ball. I don't think it was Marce Marcello Robinson with the ball when he had one and fouled. James Dillingham. Nope. Rebound pulled away by Brad Korn. Had to fight Danny Granger for the rebound. The freshman is everywhere for Bradley. On the boards as well. There's Roberts doubled up against Granger and Heemskirk. Back to Kent. 4 3. Yes. Big three by Kent there to put it to the deficit. Southern only throws by five now. He made a couple of big ones last, week, last, last Wednesday, that is, against Creighton. Two big ones at the end of the game to help seal the game for Southern against the Blue Jays. Kent Williams is nine from the floor. The Dogs trail 19-14. It's Danny Granger. Back out. Back into Granger. Muscled up against two. Out to Cello to Gillingham. Philip Gilbert buries the 15-foot jumper. That's their best scorer right there. He comes up, pulls up with the easy mid-range jumper there. Kent to answer. Yes, sir. The junior from Mount Vernon is hot. Southern's down by four, 21 to 17. And he's making a bid for that conference player of the year. Kent with another huge three, always trying to answer, always wants the ball in this hands to shoot the three. We're just ahead of immediate timeout. It's Marcello Robinson to answer, he can't. And Southern can cut this within four and to a one possession ball game. Roberts with the hook, yes sir. And now you see the tempo changing. It's now Southern's type of tempo, up and down the court. Getting easy baskets, and now they come to this deficit, only trailing by two here at the arena. And Jim Molinari could not wait for the media timeout, had to take the 30, we will keep it here. 21-19, Southern trails by two. This is a 30-second timeout, 30-second timeout. So Southern just has increased the tempo, and that's what you need to try to do against Bradley, simply because they want to slow it down. The last two minutes have gone Southern's way. Exactly. When you play into their style of tempo, obviously Southern wasn't having any success with that. They trailed big early, but as they turned it up a little bit, they've gotten back to this lead, and now they only trail by two. And coming out of a timeout, that's also good for Southern because they're pretty good at scoring coming out of timeouts. Since the... 741 mark, rather the 1145 mark. Southern has been on a 10 to 4 run. The Missouri Valley Conference Tournament comes up on Friday at the Savage Center in St. Louis. Southern will not play on Friday, but these Bradley Braves will in the play in round of the Valley Tournament. Always a good time. Should be a big turnout of Saluki fans in St. Louis this weekend. If you don't have your tickets, come on out. Be a fun time underneath the arch and at Savas Center this weekend. Marcello Robinson, 30 feet away from the hole. Southern increasing their de uh, defensive intensity. Deems Kirk, jumper from 10 is good. Roland just kind of riled in pain as he gave up a 10-foot jumper to the 7-footer. 23-19, Bradley. Roland doesn't like to give up shots to the guys as he's playing. He, he, he takes pride in defense, and he doesn't like giving up that shot to Heemsker. Darren Brooks dumped down to Jermaine Deerman. And a whistle before the shot, and a push-off foul on Bradley. It's nice to see towards the end of the season that Jermaine has been more of an offensive threat towards the hole. You see right here, Brooks got the ball to Darren, I mean to Darren, to Jermaine, rather. Jermaine goes up and puts the shot, but it was after the foul, so it doesn't count. 
So Southern, who shoots 60% from the floor, or 60% from the foul stripe, will go there. This is the 17th foul on Bradley, so the one and one. Jermaine converts on the first. Back into the ballgame, Danny Granger after a quick rest on the bench. Joe Tucker will sit down for the Braves. Granger leads Bradley with 12 points. One shot, one. And talking about free throws, Jermaine Dearman has stepped up his free throw percentage as of late from the strike. He has three points for the ball game, and now four. Southern trails 23-20. Now we get to the official timeout. 6.41 to go for the first half of play. Southern has tipped it inside two. It's 23-21. Dogs trail against the Bradley Braves. This is Saluki Basketball on WSIU, WUSI. 23-21, Bradley with the two-point lead on Southern Illinois. Other scores in the Missouri Valley Conference. Evansville is giving Illinois State a ball game. Evansville went up to Northern Iowa and knocked off the Panthers the other night. And they trail 60 to 59 late in the second half at Redbird Arena in Normal. Creighton leads Drake 21 to 15 in the first half. Southern needs Drake to beat Creighton. And Southern needs to take care of business themselves for their first Missouri Valley Conference regular season title since 92. The other score that we have, Wichita State leads Northern Iowa 21 to 15 at the Roundhouse in Wichita. Your support is vital to WSIU uh, television stations are to continue air support of Saluki games in future seasons. Show your support now by calling a generous pledge to 1-800-745-9748. Saluki basketball on WSIU, WUSI. Dogs trail by two, and Bradley seems to be folding under increased Saluki pressure, Donnie. Exactly. Martello Robinson was having a little trouble with the ball at the top of the key. Wide open, Darren Brooks. Picked it away, and Roller and Roberts runs the floor. Air ball by Brooks, but Roberts right there, a whistle, and a foul on the Bradley Braves. The freshman air ball, but Rob Roberts was able to get the ball under the basket and try and put it up. The ball just rimmed out, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Philip Gilbert will pick up his second personal foul. Not much contact against the senior for Southern, but every time you get the ball inside and you see bigger muscle get kind of hit, just a little bit, they will whistle on a guard down low, and they do on Gilbert for a second personal team foul number eight. Roland Roberts from the line this year has been well documented. 39% from the foul stripe is Joe Tucker checks back in for Bradley. Yeah, but he's all he's kind of improved a little bit, even though the percentage doesn't show that. He's shooting the ball a little better. He's getting a little bit more arc, but just hasn't been able to make it fall. He's hitting the back of the iron and it's just popping out instead of going through the hoop. They say free throw shooting is repetition and muscle training, and Roberts misses on two there. 6.08 to go for the opening half. Bradley hanging on to a two-point lead. Roland's muscles are used to blocking shots, Russ. And working down low against Brandon Heemskirk for Bradley. It's Marcello Robinson to Heemskirk, and on cue, he misses a 10-foot jumper. A whistle on a foul on the rebound try. And they're going to get a red clad Bradley Brave. That will be the ninth team foul on Bradley. And the personal comes on Joe Tucker. Exactly. When the shot came off, the ball came off the rim, rather. See all the jerseys flying around, and there was some contact down there. So they got the Bradley Braves, and they'll put the freshman Darren Brooks on the line. He averages 9.3 points per ball game. The best Saluki from the strike. 81% misses there. But Jermaine on the rebound. Up against two. Whistle finally called against the double team. Either on Joe Tucker or preferably on Danny Granger. And it will be on Danny Granger. Exactly. That's good for Southern. Southern's getting the ball down low, drawing the fouls. I see Jermaine Dearman got the rebound from the missed free throw. Goes up and draws the hack, and now he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Jermaine from the line this year, 57%, has been better of late. Had a big ball game against Indiana State on Saturday. The 84-74 Saluki win misses the first. Richie Hall will check back in for Bradley. And Danny Granger will check out. Very impressed with the freshman for Bradley. Danny Granger out of Louisiana leads the Braves in scoring with 12. Jermaine has another free throw coming. They bury that to Southerns now within one, 23-22. This is where you want intensity and you'd like a big crowd to support you here. Yeah, the fans have kind of had their hands under their seats. It's kind of quiet, not as loud as usual as they have been so far this season. As always, a great student turnout. Big possession here for Bradley. 
hanging on to a one-point lead. James Gillingham out high. Kent Williams on him. They find Shello Robinson corner left. Ball tipped away. Stetson Harrison and a foul. They're going to call it on Bradley. Joe and Tucker got picked and then con converted the foul. That's linking bad offensive possession and bad defensive possession there. Exactly. Big play by Stetson to get that arm out there and deflect the ball. And he was out and running and he got pulled from behind. Now he'll go to the line and hopefully uh, Southern Illinois can knock down some of these free throws that struggled so far this game. Stetson to the line out of Belleville East where he set many records for the Lancers. The first of the two is good. 10 team foul on the Bradley Braves. On Joe Tucker, that is his third. Mike Suggs back into the ballgame for the Braves. And Joe Tucker will sit down. Stetson nearly chose Evansville over Southern. But he's probably quite happy that he chose Southern instead. Evansville is mired in the basement in the valley. And Southern takes their first lead of the ball game, 24-23. Exactly. The freshman has showed Coach Weber that he can come out, step on the court, and play at any time. Play lots of minutes at that. Marcello Robinson checked out by Marcus Belcher. Nearly a lazy pass. Reggie Hall back to Robinson. Nice ball movement by the Braves. They seem to be out of sync on offense. He's kind of throwing the ball around. Not getting to the hole like they were earlier in this game. They do not often. Four shots. Four on the shot clock. A three. No. Rebound Rowan Roberts. They don't force shots very often. Have more so this year. They've struggled offensively, but quite disciplined. Stetson Harrison counted at a foul. That was a good drive by the freshman. He split the two defenders, went up and made the easy layup. Drawing the foul at the same time, and now he'll go to the free throw line to shoot and try and get the three-point play. Stetson Harrison has come of age in the last ball, couple of ball games. Averages seven points per game, but ran the floor nicely there. There's good recognition by Southern as well. He'll try to cap the three-point play. Southern leads 26-23. Exactly, he fooled his defender, thought he was going right, and he just went left. Split the two, and he got the easy bucket. Big play by Stetson. Also gets the crowd into the game as well. He had nine points up in Peoria in mid-January. He converts there, Southern up 27-23. Stetson now has five points for the ball game, and the Dogs enjoy their biggest lead of the night. Reggie Hall has had some difficulty at Bradley through five years, but got his degree and was honored on Saturday. Marcello Robinson misses the three. Rebound long to Kent Williams. Dogs have numbers. Williams to the goal. Got it! What a shot by Kent. What a shot. Timeout on the floor. Timeout Bradley. Jim Molinari is starting to watch the wheels fall off of the Bradley Express with trails by 629-23. And this is where you want your big-time players to show up. And they do say that Kyle Corver is the odds-on favorite for the Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year Award, but I don't think you could tell too many fans of the maroon and white that Kent Williams doesn't have a shot at that coveted award. Exactly. You saw Kent. The ball was tipped there, and he just kind of scooped the ball up as he was falling out of bounds and got it to go in and got the, the playground-type play to go in. And the fans are happy. They're cheering. And Jim Molinari's club had a big lead early, and now they, they're struggling trying to figure out what to do against this Southern Illinois offense. They're just running the court and just playing a, a step faster than Bradley right now. Bradley swept Southern Illinois last year, winning in difficult fashion up in Peoria and winning down here in Carbondale last year. Jim Molinari is four and two. Rather six and two against Bruce Weber's Saluki. Reggie Hall stranded up top. They won't even touch him. A 15-footer is flat, but Heemskirk there for the tip-in. Kent Williams into the front court. If Southern can just run on these Braves, they can run them out of the building. Stetson Harrison from 15. No, Marcello Robinson on the rebound. Starting to get more physical and more of an up-tempo ball game. James Gillingham, and down on the floor is Kent Williams. Flat jumper by Heemskirk. Tip missed by Reggie Hall, and Kent Williams is still writhing in pain on the floor in front of the Saluki bench. He took four stitches to his left eye in the ball game at home. Wednesday night against Creighton. And to go into the locker room and administer his own treatment. There was no trainer around, so he had to 
cover up the stitches or cover up the cut. And at 321, he is injured. 29-25, SIU with a four-point advantage. It appears the contact, his contact has fallen out. Once again, it's, it's happened a couple times this year, and looks like he's fucking it back in. He took four stitches in the ball game against Creighton. And as Saluki fans know, there is no tougher ball player than Kent Williams. Lifelong Saluki fans say that he is the toughest and gutsiest ball player that they have ever seen down the maroon and white uniform. Exactly. It was just what an amazing play he had. Getting the cut, having blood in the back of his hair, and then coming out and making those two clutch threes when Bruce Weber said he was still dizzy and still couldn't see straight with the stitches right above his eye. WSIU Television has been the only consistent local free over-the-air source for these games for the past several years. Call in now for your support of Saluki basketball on WSIU's television stations with a generous pledge for WSIU Public Broadcasting, 800-745-9748. Stetson Harrison will go to the line for Southern Illinois. Brandon Kingskirk picks up his third personal foul, and that's trouble for the Braves, who do not have a wealth of height. And they are in foul trouble now. Hetson, uh, Stetson Harrison for the first of two, and he made it. Exactly. He picked up the third foul while Roland Roberts was sitting on the bench. So uh, you see Big Roland's about to come in, and he can take advantage of Bradley Bob Heemskirk if he's in foul trouble. Michael Stewart into the ball game for Bradley. His first appearance, 6'8", 230, and a junior from Chicago's King High School. And you rarely see players from the public league make it in Division I basketball. There are only three players from the Public League of Chicago playing in the Missouri Valley Conference, and no player on a starting lineup of the Big Ten is from the Public League. Free throw made by Harrison, 31-25. The official timeout comes under four at 321. Dogs up by six, biggest lead of the ball game. This is Saluki Basketball on WSIU, WUSI. 48. Again, net number is 1-800-745-9748. There is a great deal of history on the hilltop in Peoria. 20 appearances in the NIT tournament. They've won the thing a couple of times, winning in the 1960s season. Percy Hawkins played in Peoria through four years, amassed 3,008 points from 1984 to 1988. They've been to the NCAA tournament a number of times as well. Some good history in Peoria. Seven times they've been to the NCAA tournament. Once in the Jim Molinari era, they've been in the NIT tournament five times, a whistle away from the ball and a foul on Southern. Russ, you mentioned earlier how Southern came out shooting pretty cold. That percentage has risen now. Now they're shooting 43.5%, make that 44% for the game. So they've shot the ball better as they've up the tempo a little bit against Bradley. Foul called on Southern. On Brad Korn, team foul number five on Southern. Philip Gilbert for two, no. Pulled away by Brad Korn. Dogs look to run, and they do want to increase the tempo, but can't have a break there. Ball kicked by Reggie Hall, out of bounds. It was kicked, and they will reset the shot clock. 2.43 to go for the first half, 31-25 at halftime. We'll have a visit with Paul Kowalczyk, the athletic director here at Southern Illinois University. That's at halftime. Dogs up by six now. Stetson Harrison working on Philip Gilbert. Down to Brad Korn. Entry from Rowan Roberts in trouble, and now the big man stranded 15 feet away from the hoop. Kent Williams. Beautiful give and go. Can't finish. No foul. Rebound pulled away by Reggie Hall. Exactly. It was a nice give and go play, but Kent just couldn't put the ball up. He put it up a little too high or tried to drive foul, draw a foul, but couldn't get that to go. So missed opportunity there for Southern Illinois. Michael Stewart from 15 is good. His first points of the night, 31-27. Saluki lead is now four. And the Braves continue to shoot pretty hot. They're shooting 48% so far. And as we know, the teams that do shoot over 45% do cause problems for Southern Illinois. Southern trails in the, rather leads in the rebounding mark, 14-13, and a bucket. And count it, and a foul. On Bradley, Rowan will go to line to try to cap the three-point play. Senior and senior night gets the ball up in the air and throws it down. Draws the foul. Looks like it came before, but nevertheless, he'll go to the line and complete the three-point play. Or at least attempt to. Rowan out of Woodbridge, Virginia. 
transfer from Virginia Tech. His stay has been short here in Carbondale, but has been quite eventful. And one of the best big men that the Valley has seen in quite a while. Converts on the free throw, and the crowd likes that whenever he knocks down a free throw. It's 34-27, dogs up by seven. Exactly, when you can get rolling to convert free throws, and you know you're in business. James Gillingham, late step towards the goal and travel. Turnover for Bradley. Turnover number eight on the Braves. Southern will have it with the length of the floor to go and a seven-point lead in tow at 135. Exactly, and Bradley seems to, appears to have gone away from the game plan. Early in the game, they just kept dumping the ball down low and trying to get easy baskets. Now, it seems like they're making costly turnovers at the top of the key or around that area, and SIU's taking full advantage of it. Whistle and a foul down low. They'll get Michael Sturt. It will be the foul on the... Brave from Chicago. That will be his second personal. Team foul now on the double bonus, so Roland Roberts will go to the stride. Roland Roberts at the line for the Suzuki, shooting two. Roland tonight, one of three. He'll shoot two and make the first. I was going to say it might not be a bad foul to put Roland on the line, try and avoid the Salukis from making a basket, but when he's making free throws, what can you do? second and the word is out from Missouri Valley Conference that late in the ball game and if Roland Roberts is on the floor and even if Jermaine Dearman's on the floor they could play hack-a-shack a little bit and put the dogs at the line and try to trim a lead down James Gillingham in the corner in trouble against Kent Williams a five count is on they don't get it stolen away by Jermaine Dearman three on two Dearman had the pass stolen away he seemed confused didn't know who he wanted to pass to should have shot the ball himself Marcello Robinson missed, but Reggie Hall right there for the stick back points. 36-29. Fast and furious in the last couple of possessions. A jump ball call, alternate possession will go Southern's way. Fans wanted a foul, don't get it. Southern keeps the possession. 50 seconds to go for the first half. See Kent right here. Ball was hit. He thought he got a foul, but referees called jump ball, and now they'll Southern will take the possession again. 30-second timeout taken with 50 seconds to go. Southern up 36 to 29. The Braves come in after losing on Saturday at home against the Creighton Blue Jays. They lost the ball game 80 to 64. And there is trouble in Peoria for Jim Molinari. The 11th year head coach at Bradley has started to enter some fan difficulties where the fans just do not like him much anymore. And Made a trip up to DeKalb on Saturday. Northern Illinois University, they closed out their historic building, Chick Evans Fieldhouse. And after the ball game that his team lost, Jim Molinari drove up from Peoria to be at the closing ceremonies of Northern's Chick Evans Fieldhouse. And I don't care what people in Peoria might say, but that is an outstanding move and a class move by a very class individual, Jim Molinari. Exactly. He, you know, he still knows where his roots right. are, and he was there before, so it's a nice move by him to go and watch the closing of the Fieldhouse. Jermaine Dearman initiates a contact to go to the line to try to cap a three-point play. Southern up 38-29, and this is initiating contact, Donnie. The jump stop against Reggie Hall, and a beautiful floater in. He'll go to the line. Exactly. Jermaine was able to arch back and put the ball in the hoop. He'll go to the free throw line to shoot three. Great play by Jermaine. It's an overtime. Evansville and Illinois State tied up at 66. And a lane violation on the free throw. So Jermaine missed the three-point play try, but we'll have another chance at it on the lane violation by a red-clad Brave. Sly Willis into the ballgame. Roland Roberts out. Not a bad idea. Don't want to pick up a needless foul with under a minute to go for the first half. The senior out of Indianapolis bends and throws, and he got it. Dogs up by 10, 39-29. Philip Gilbert, top of the key. Push it back out to Marcello Robinson. Differential is at nine seconds from game clock to shot clock. 15 on the shot clock now. Reggie Hall, whistle on a foul. That's why they took Roland Roberts out of the ball game. Exactly, you want to 
conservative the big man when he has when he's not in foul trouble you can save him for the second half and maybe use a foul or two smart play by coach Weber there foul on Southern is on Stetson Harrison that's his second personal team foul number six on Southern Illinois 21.5 seconds to go for the first half Bradley to inbound Marcello Robinson and the Braves will likely hold for one the shot clock has its expired Gilbert in the lane with nine. You see the time in the bottom left corner of your screen. Got to move now. Cello lost the handle. Still loose. Aaron shot thrown up and missed, and it's half time. Exactly. Southern was there. lucky to get out of way. Get out of here with not allowing Bradley to get the shot up. So the score is 39-29. Southern will hold on to the 10-point lead, and it's been a tale of 10-minute quarters, actually. Bradley came out, started the game. They were up early on Southern Illinois, but the Salukis were able to turn it around, turn up the tempo a little bit, and jump out to the lead, as they see now. It's 39-29. Southern has the advantage, 10-point lead. Right now, over to Bruce Weber with Brent Horseman. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Bruce Weber. Coach, how did your team respond after going down 15-5 in the first half? Well, we told them you, you never know how the game's going to start, and they could come out and be dead or come out and play their best game. And they hit some tough shots early. And, you know, we didn't defend very well, especially their big guys, Granger, and then they, we got them in foul trouble. That a lot made them play some other people. We started getting the ball inside more and got, you know, and that's when we got them in more foul trouble, and then we made our free throws. We talked about having a double-digit lead at halftime, and we got it there. Some good defensive stops after, you know, the beginning of the game. Okay, thanks. Good luck in that second half. Back to you, but, uh, Russ and uh, Donnie. Thank you, Brent. 39-29, Southern Illinois with the 10-point advantage at halftime. And we'll take a break. It's halftime from the arena in Carbondale. Dogs up by 10. This is Saluki Basketball on WSIU, WUSI. Back inside SIU Arena in Carbondale, I'm Russ Eisenstein. Donnie Tillman is alongside. Southern has the advantage 39 to 29 on the Bradley Braves. Trying to sweep Bradley after Bradley swept Southern Illinois last year. The importance is simple. If Southern Illinois wins this ball game and Creighton loses, then Southern is a Missouri Valley Conference regular season champion. Missouri Valley Conference standings brought to you by Edward Jones, Creighton, and Southern Illinois atop the Missouri Valley Conference. The tie is interesting. In fifth place, Wichita State, Northern Iowa, and Drake. Wichita State is the odd man out in a tie break situation. Right now, the uh, Shockers have a 21-15 lead on Northern Iowa at the Roundhouse in Wichita, so the winner of that ball game could very well have the fifth place spot. However, Wichita State loses in a tie break to each of Northern Iowa and Drake. So Wichita could be the odd man out in that situation. Third place could be locked up. Illinois State is in overtime right now against Evansville, tied up at 66 in the overtime period between the Aces and the Redbirds. Southwest Missouri State is 10 and seven and in fourth place. They're fighting for that third spot with Illinois State. The two teams have split this year, so then they'd have to go in ascending order or descending order from the top of the standings down to try to break Break, that tie break for the third spot in the Missouri Valley Conference. Then you look down to the, the fifth place tie. The loser of that situation could slip all the way down to seventh spot in the Missouri Valley Conference. The bottom four teams in the league, seven, eight, nine, and ten, playing the play-in round of the Missouri Valley Conference tournament on Friday at Savas Center in St. Louis. Through 18 games, we do not have a champion in the regular season yet. It will either be Creighton in Southern Illinois. Creighton has been to the NCAA tournament the last three years, Donnie. Exactly. You're exactly right there, and hopefully Southern Illinois can reduce that streak and try and get in as well. It's halftime here from Carbondale, 39 to 29. Missouri Valley Conference standings brought to you by Edward Jones. Edward Jones serving financial uh, investors since 1887. Halftime here from Carbondale, 39 to 29. Dogs have the advantage by 10. We'll take a break. This is Saluki basketball on WSIU, WUSI. Back to the SIU Arena, I'm Russ Eisenstein, Donnie Tillman alongside, 39-29. Southern Illinois has a 10-point advantage on the Bradley Braves. Let's take a look at the first half numbers, and what you'll see in the first half numbers is Bradley and Southern have now caught up to each other in shooting from the floor. Bradley is 46% from the floor, and Southern Illinois 46% from the floor. Southern has the advantage rebounding-wise, 18-16. to Turnover-wise, the Braves are on top of that mark with nine to four. 
And that's not a good number that you want to be plus side on. Leading point getter for the Braves is Danny Granger, who was hot from the floor in the first half. The freshman is 12 points. Southern is led by Kent Williams, 14 from the floor. Six for 11 from the floor, and the dogs are up from the line. From the free throw stripe, they are two of 13 from the uh, three free throw stripe in the first half. And Bradley has been to the line less times than that. They are two of two from the line. So second half would obviously be the key of turning up the tempo. And when the tempo has been turned up, Bradley has faltered, but Southern has improved and have taken their 10 point lead at the halftime break. Exactly, but Bradley is still shooting 46%, Russ. Southern does want to turn up the tempo and continue to let, make that field goal percentage just slide down a little bit. And hopefully Southern can score more points because they'd like to get in that 80 range and keep Bradley in the 60 range and get a victory here tonight. In the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, if Southern is the number two seed, they will take on the winner of the 7-10 ball game that will be occurring on Friday. The game time will be 6 o'clock from the Savage Center in St. Louis. If they are the number one seed in the tournament, they will play at noon on Saturday in St. Louis. Starters back on the floor for Bradley. Starters back on the floor for Southern Illinois. 20 minutes on the clock, and the dogs are up by 10. Bradley has the basketball. Marcello Robinson back up to Philip Gilbert. In the man-to-man -man defense is Southern Illinois as the crowd rises at the SIU Arena. Beautiful move towards the goal. He got the scoop shot. He cut through the defense and slid through and then scooped it up. Got the two points. Quickly into the front court. Jermaine Beerman, the junior from Indianapolis, puts the dogs back up 41-31. I misspoke earlier. Southern Illinois is 13 of 18 from the foul stripe. Bradley is two of two and a steal by Roland Roberts. He'll run the floor, look for help, draw the contact, kick out, and nearly a turnover, but Southern corrals it. Over the defense to Kent, down low to Roland. Doubled up as he will be all night. Fights through, throws it up, got it, count it, and a foul. The big man was tied up. He was thinking about passing it, but then just took it himself. Got the ball up there, rolled around the rim, finally fell through. You see right there, he's tied up. But then he finally gets the shot up, the ball rolls in, completes the play, and now he'll try to make it a three-point play as he goes to the free throw line. 39% from the foul stripe this year. In the first half, Rowan was three of five. Four of six now, 44-31. Each lead from here on out will be Southern's biggest for the ball game. It's at 13 right now, Bradley. 60 points per game offensively. Hard to make up big numbers. Danny Granger misses there. Did not miss much in the first half, but a foul on the rebound try. Foul on Southern Illinois. And half, on rolling. The halftime could have helped out Southern a lot. Granger was hot in the first half. He got out to scoring double-digit points early, but he missed right there. This is the number one offense in the league compared to the number 10 offense in the league. Kingskirk on the rebound try, no. Third try for the Braves is Danny Granger counted in a foul. Roland Roberts went up for the block. Granger just head fake, and then Jermaine Dearman tried to come over and get the block as well, but he ended up fouling Granger, and Granger will go to the line. Granger has been very impressive in the first half, has 14 points for the ball game now, six of eight from the floor, and he's working against some taller timbers in Jermaine Dearman and Roland Roberts, and he converts on the three-point play try, and it's back down to 10, 44-34, just underway in the second half from the arena in Carbondale. Exactly, he had great patience there to be able to draw the foul and get to the free throw line. Jermaine Dearman had the ball swiped away, but taken back. Running a 1-4 set. Roberts turn around and face, misses. Rebound pulled down by Bradley. James Gillingham into the front court. The play it left to Joe Tucker. Tucker will cut and doesn't get the basketball. Southern trapping up high and a foul on Roland. Roland stepped up 40 feet away from the hole, and that's where the foul came. That on Rollins, number three. Sylvester Willis will check in. And out of the ball game is Roland Roberts. So Sly will get some minutes against Granger and Heemskirk. Should have the advantage in that situation with the wealth of experience underneath his belt. Ten-point lead. Dogs 44-34 on Bradley. Fresh shot clock. 
Gillingham towards the hole, muscled up and fouled. Kent Williams doesn't like the call. And it will be on Sylvester Willis. The Southern picking up a number of fouls to start the second half with their inside players. That's team foul number four on the dogs, as opposed to one team foul on Bradley. And Gillingham was just mugged, and Kent Williams didn't like the call, but it was blatant and a foul on Southern. It appeared Gillingham leaned in a little bit, and Kent Williams hit him a little bit. Gillingham was able to draw the contact, but Williams didn't like the call, but it appeared that he did grab some, grab some arm there. First free throw good for James Gillingham. Had 11 points in the loss to Creighton on Saturday. Second free throw is good. Gillingham now has six points for the ball game. And the Braves trail by eight now with 18 minutes to go for the second half. Final home game of the regular season. Possibility of an NIT home game to come if the Dogs do not get in the NCAA tournament. It's Harrison dump off and a foul. Now will come on Joe Tucker. That will be his fourth personal foul, team foul number two. And when you penetrate, Donnie, there are two things that can happen. You could pick up that foul, or you could also distribute. Stetson was going to distribute there, but picked up the foul anyway. Exactly. He was hit on the arm as he was trying to hit Jermaine Dearman down low. But something will get the ball in. JD from 15, no good, but an offensive rebound. Kent Williams slices towards the goal. Got it from five feet. Dogs back up by 10, 46-36. Exactly, big move by Kent. As soon as he got the ball, he went straight for the hole. He was either going to draw a foul or get the basket there, and he was able to pull up and get the short-range jumper to stretch that SIU's lead back out. He has 16, leads three Salukis in double figures. Danny Granger, no, got his own rebound. Philip Gilbert on the baseline. Whistle on the shot, I believe. The bucket did not go down, and the foul will come on Marcus Belcher. That's team foul number five on Southern Illinois through under three minutes of basketball. Personal foul number two on Marcus Belcher. That's a lot of team fouls, Donnie. Exactly, and if they don't watch it, Bradley might be shooting a lot of free throws at the end of this game, and they might not be good because Southern usually doesn't match people on the free throw strike. Bill Gilbert, 76% from the strike. Has four points in the ball game. As number five there. He's their leading scorer. 14 points a game. Jason Faulkner checks into the ball game for the Braves. The first appearance for him. 6'7 and a sophomore from Ontario, Canada. Jerome Robinson came from Canada as well. They've had somewhat of a pipeline from the country to our north. Second free throw good by Philip Gilbert. 46-38. And it really is interesting how pipelines and recruiting really gets done because you wouldn't figure that a school in Peoria would recruit well in Canada, but Jerome Robinson was a heck of a ball player, graduated last year, and was a big time player from Canada. A foul as Marcus Belcher drives to the goal. And it appears that Faulkner was the guilty party. He is, that's his first personal, team foul number three. Exactly, that's what you want to see the senior do. Instead of distributing the ball all the time, kind of drive to the hole every now and then and kind of surprise the defense as he did there, and he'll go to the free throw line. The senior from Mexico, Missouri, bends and throws and got it. Southern up by nine, 47-38. Yeah, Southern is trying to move Marcus around a little bit more this game. Get him to drive to the hole rather than to spot up and shoot threes, like he usually does. Second free throw good. Southern has been sizzling from the foul stripe in the ball game tonight. 16 of 21 as they lead by 10. Just ahead of immediate timeout that will come underneath 16 minutes. James Gillingham gets a hard pick from Danny Granger. Now Granger to the hole. Missed from five feet, ball tipped away. It will stay with the red clad Braves underneath their own hoop. Darren Brooks back in the ball game for Southern. Marcus Belzer will sit down. Southern can go nine deep. And they've proven that this year. And many people feel that the bench four can start anywhere else in the conference. Exactly when you have the freshman Darren Brooks coming off the bench, he's part of the all bench team for the Missouri Valley. They're going to get Jermaine Dearman on a push off foul. That for JD will be number two and team foul number six through not even four minutes of basketball. 
This is a Bradley team that can shoot 73% from the foul stripe, so you do not want them there with a tenuous 10-point lead. What a battle between Granger and Dearman down low. Faulkner trapped in the corner. Bradley has to reset, 23 on the shot clock. Gilbert in deep, out to Danny Granger. He misses and has gone cold in the second half. Ball tipped out of bounds. It will go Southern's way with 16-14 to go for the ball game. Southern played tough defense on that possession. They were all over, the, wherever the ball went, there were a couple of jerseys there to help defend, and that was a good defensive possession for Southern Illinois. Darren Brooks, who sat out last year via the red shirt, felt it was good for him, wanted to be on the court, and Jermaine to the bucket, but fouled, and Danny Granger wanted a clean block, and it was all ball, it appeared, but it could have been with the body as well. So J.D. will go to the line to shoot two, and we'll see Donnie here. Looked like he got all ball there, Russ, but he'll be the benefit of a call. It's a nice pass by Darren Brooks to look down for the junior forward, but he'll go to the free throw line. There were some words between Danny Granger and Jermaine Dearman, and the crowd picked up on that. Nice crowd on senior night here in Carbondale. Looks like 9,000 in the house. Good throw, no good. Granger still upset about that foul call against him. Jim Molinari give him a few words of... Reggie Hall back in the lineup for Bradley. Sitting down will be Danny Granger, who has struggled in the second half. Jermaine Dearman makes good on the second free throw. 49-38. Two-man pressure by the Dogs. Albi token pressure in the backcourt. Southern looking for win number 24 on the year. Into the front court. It's Hall to Gillingham. Down low, Faulkner away from everybody, counted and a foul. He was able to slip past as he got the ball, slid through the defender, and then he put the easy basket up, drawing the contact, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot. Faulkner got away from everybody. Left. Yeah, that was a needless foul on Jermaine Dearman's part. Should have just let the defender, go, the person with the ball go through, rather, but Faulkner get a chance to get an extra point. Free throw no good. Averages just under two points per ball game. Southern up 49-40. Bradley has hung around after having a big lead early on in the ballgame. Southern finally caught fire in the last 10 minutes of the first half, and Kent Williams can't continue it. Rebound fought around, and will go Bradley's way, and this will be a official timeout. Media timeout comes at 15-27 for the ballgame from Carbondale. Southern Illinois, 49. Bradley, 40. This is Saluki Basketball, WSIU, WUSI. 49-29, 49-40 rather, SIU at the advantage on the Bradley Braves. I'm Russ Eisenstein, Donnie Tillman is alongside for Saluki Basketball on WSIU, WUSI. The WSIU television stations want to bring these games back to you next year, but to do that, they need your help now. Without the financial support of you and your friends, chances are good you will not see this many games in the future. Let them know you want to see them again by calling to make a pledge of your support today. Please call now, 1-800-745-9748. Again, that number is 1-800-745-9748. It was a magical run for the Salukis in the mid-90s, three years consecutive. They made appearances in the NCAA tournament. Southern's last NCAA tournament win came all the way back in 1977 when they defeated Arizona in the first round of the tournament. 81-77 and lost to the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, 86-81. to That was in Omaha. The loss occurred in Oklahoma City. Southern trying to get there for the first time since 96. And the at-large chances are tenuous at best. A foul away from the ball on Bradley, and it will be Southern basketball. They'll get Faulkner again. That will be his second personal. There is a great deal of history in this building. Greg Sterick played here. Now one of the Saluki broadcasters on the radio. Mike Len played here. Joe Merriweather played here. Walt Frazier played here. Southern trying to add to that history with an NCAA conference appearance. And Kent Williams buries.
Carries a three from the right of the circle, and the dogs are back up by 12, 52 to 40. Exactly, and that was a clutch three by Kent. With a hand in his face, he was able to get over his defender, put the ball up, and put it through the hoop for three. It's Hogue, who's in the ball game now, hasn't had a great deal of playing time. Nearly caused a turnover, lost the handle, and Southern into the front court. And Southern up by 12 and pushing. Brooks for three. No. Rebound Willis underneath the goal. Muscled up a shot. Oh, good line. Didn't hit the bucket. Well, good. The strike to shoot two free throws. Exactly. Now the tempo is turning back in the Southern Illinois' oh, right. favor. They're up and running. The freshman Brooks with the three-point attempt. No good. But Sylvester Willis was able to get down. As you see right here, get the board. And go up strong. But draws the foul. And now he'll go to the free throw line to try and sink two. And every Bradley player has their hands on their knees. Not used to this tempo. Southern trying to increase it and trying to increase their 12-point lead. Tyrese Bowie back in the lineup. Rowan Roberts also back in for the dogs. Remain Dearman will sit down. And Stetson Harrison. Roland always creates matchup problems for opposing teams. And does in this situation against Bradley. Second free throw no. Rebound pulled down by Buckner. He's a load offensively and defensively. And in the defensive situation, he'll pick up Reggie Hall, the senior for Bradley. Bradley trails by 12. The lowest scoring offense in the Missouri Valley Conference. And when you get them down big, chances are you're going to put them away. A whistle on the entry pass and a foul on Tyrese Bowie. Exactly, getting back to what you were saying, Russ, about being the lowest scoring offense. If you're down by 12 points at this mark, chances are it's going to be a lot harder for you to be able to come back. Now, Southern has proven they've been able to come back throughout the season, but you're the 10th team in the Valley, as far as, score, as scoring goes, it's going to be a lot harder for you. Brad Korn in the ballgame for Southern. Sly Willis will check out. Faulkner to the stripe. He's had decent minutes for Bradley since coming in in the second half, and the re free throw is no good. Tyrese Bowie, mid-range jumper, he got it. That's his offense right there, as Coach Weber likes to call him. He came around and got the easy baseline jumper. It was nice to see him get on the board. And if you recall, he had a big three in the ballgame against Wichita State that put Southern over the triple-digit plateau. Gave Southern 101 points in that ball game. It's Philip Gilbert. Michael Stewart's just stranded top of the key and they'll trigger. Reggie Hall from 18 feet. Got it. Reggie is hat. Go ahead, Donnie. He thought about whether passing it or shooting it and finally just went up for the shot and got it to go through. Darren Brooks, corner right to Tyrese Bowie, had the pass rejected by Faulkner into the Saluki bench. Marcus Belcher will check back in for Southern. Kent Williams will get a much-needed rest. And the fans give fans a nice ovation as he sits down. He has 19 points on 8 of 14 shooting. 12 points for Roland Roberts and 11 points for Jermaine Dearman. Southern up 54-42, rolling up and down. Bad numbers for the big three, and Rowan continues to add to his point total with a nice bucket there. 46 points combined between the big three of Roberts, Deerman, and Williams. Dogs up 56-42. It's Stewart on the right wing. And the motion offense is not much motion right now for Bradley. Boucher senses that and tipped the ball away, but back by Bradley, 10 on the shot clock. Now with eight to Gillingham. Oh. Hales it from 15 feet. He knocked that shot down, but they wasted a lot of time. And if they want to get back to this game, they have to score points in a hurry, not waste, town, waste down time working the offense. Well, it's never been Bradley's forte. Or Jim Mel Molinari's MO to increase the tempo. Alley up to roll it, and he finished. What a pass from Brad Corn at the top of the key. He saw Rowan twisting around. Rowan was able to get away from his defender. He got the ball up there and slammed it down for two. He flashes a smile into the front court. His time in Carbondale has been short, but oh, so productive. Rowan now has 16 points and a steal. Tyrese Bowie leads the break. Dogs have numbers. Belcher to Roberts. If he gets another dunk, the roof's going to go off of this place. 
He called for the ball early, but they weren't able to get it to him in time. Tyrese for three. No, nobody there for a rebound try for Southern. Immediate timeout on the next dead ball. 58-44, Southern with a 14-point lead. Faulkner, rather Stewart is working down low against Rowan, and Rowan forced him out. Gillingham towards the goal. Bank is open. 58-46. Nice move by Gillingham to get the first step, and then he got straight to the basket. He put up pretty easy deuce. It's Brooks to Bowie. Rowan tried to flash out and set a high pick, couldn't do it. Brooks towards the goal, acrobatic underhand layup. Everything's falling for the dogs now, up by 14 is Southern. And who cares what Creighton's gonna do against Drake? Win number 24 would be mighty sweet for a ball club that's in the mid-50s in the RPI. And has done everything that the selection committee has asked them to do. Michael Stewart buries a little hook. Dogs down by 12, but we'll talk about that, Donnie. Mid-50s in the RPI. If Southern can get to win number 24 and possibly the championship game, foul on Michael Stewart on the entry pass. Exactly, Russ. If they can get to the championship game of the Valley Tournament, they put a really big burden on the selection committee when it comes down to choosing who gets into the field of 64. If Southern doesn't make it, they'll probably be one of the best teams in the NIT. Foul on Stewart is his third. Team foul number seven on the Braves, and you're right, the NIT has expanded to 40 teams this year. Every mid-level or every mid-range team in the big conferences will be there. The Missouri Valley Conference has historically had, at best, three teams in the NIT. Even in years that two teams have gone to the NCAA tournament, Roland Roberts to the line, and he buried it. So, in that respect with a down year in the conference if you're looking at two teams in the NCAA tournament you'd be hard-pressed to find an NIT ball club within the Missouri Valley Conference Illinois State is 15 and 13 barring of what they do tonight and Southwest Missouri State is 15 and 14. Second free throw good by Roland Roberts will continue the talk after the timeout. Dogs are cruising at home in the final regular season ball game of the year. 62-48 SIU with the lead on Bradley this is Saluki basketball. Again, that number is 453-5341, online at Ticketmaster.com. 62-48, SIU with the advantage. They have the lead on the boards, 27-25. Southern now shooting 51%. Bradley is 47%. If you recall, Donnie, in the first half, Southern could have hit a thing early on, and Bradley was just sizzling from the floor, and that's kind of reversed here in the second half. Exactly, you talked about Southern Illinois being stuck in the mud, and they've obviously pulled their shoes out of there, and Bradley's the one who's stuck trying to figure out an answer to the Southern Illinois offense that seems to have turned the tempo in their favor. Wouldn't it be a, a paw, it's Lukey paw out of the mud? <laughs> Dogs up by 14, James Gillingham into the front court, Brad Korn back into the ball game for Southern. They are trying to up the tempo. Somewhat hard for Bradley, but Philip Gilbert hits the jumper out of the timeout, and Brad Korn is down on the floor. 62-50 now. Maybe just a bit of a cramp. Just kind of bent over. We have an update from Missouri. And they'll walk it out. From Omaha, Nebraska, with 429 left to play. They are announcing the score. Leads Creighton. 67-64. 67 64. Drake leads Creighton from the Civic Auditorium in Omaha. Could the unthinkable happen? Could the Drake Bulldogs, who last year finally broke a long time road losing streak, pull, pull the biggest upset of the season on the road? And could Creighton fall? And could the Dogs get their first Missouri Valley Conference regular season championship since 1992? That's why at the end of the season, things come down to the wire. And those underdogs, you never expect them to really do much. But Drake's obviously making their bark being heard tonight. And they're giving Creighton all they can handle over in Omaha. And don't think for a minute that the dogs didn't hear that and are ready to go in for the kill against the Bradley Braves, who are wounded. Roberts on a turnaround. Rolls good. 
64 to 50, and Donnie, there has just been an injection of life into this building again. Exactly. You see the fans getting loud, and you also see Southern Illinois. Seems like they're a lot faster on uh, defense here. They're moving around a lot quicker. Hello, Gilbert. Baseline left to the goal. Blocked away by Rowan. All the seniors everywhere. Stetson Harrison into the front court. No need to push. 14-point lead. Down to JD. Triple team. Out to Tyree, 17-footer, rolls no, rebound Stetson Harrison. Third try for Southern, rebounds are going Southern's way. Down to J.D. And he'll back it back out. Southern up by 14 and the jump ball. Possession arrow will go Southern's way. 8.56 to go for the ball game, 64 to 50. SIU leads by 14 to repeat. Drake has the lead on Creighton in Omaha. At the Civic Auditorium, the Bulldogs and Luke McDonald are beating the Blue Jays. As you see right here, Jermaine Dearman gets tied up in the corner. He's trying to get free to find someone to pass to, but they call the jump ball, and the ball is still remain in Southern Illinois' possession. It's Kent Williams on the inbound. If Creighton loses and Southern wins, Southern is the regular season champion in the Missouri Valley Conference. It appears that Southern is going to win the ball game, barring an unthinkable comeback by the Bradley Braves, who averaged 60 points per ball game. Southern is above that at 64 right now. Well, you never know things can happen, and anything can happen here in the Missouri Valley, but it'd be nice to think that Southern Illinois has a comfortable lead right now with 14, with just over eight minutes left. James Gillingham blocked away, no foul. Stetson Harrison got a flat-footed block. Second try for Bradley, no good. And a jump ball. It's getting pretty physical down there, Russ. It appears to be a couple of fouls that should have been called, but the refs are letting them play, and they're going to call a jump ball, and Bradley's going to come away with the possession, kind of a break for them. And we have an injured Brave down on the court. Looks like Jason Gillingham is wincing and playing. It is physical, Donnie, and Heems Kirk and Stetson Harrison and Faulkner down there for Bradley, who is an undersized ball club. Philip Gilbert checks back into the ball game for the Braves. 1995 was the last appearance for Southern in the NCAA tournament. They lost to Syracuse down in Austin, Texas, 96-92. They lost to Minnesota in Sacramento, California the year prior and lost to Duke at the Rosemont Horizon, now the All-State Arena in Chicago. And a foul on the inbound. That was back in 1993. Bobby Hurley was on that ball club, but a very talented Saluki squad went up there and lost by 30. But this was a special place back in the mid-90s, and it's starting to get that way again here in Carbondale. Exactly. This has been the year for Southern Illinois. It's, it's do or die and go for bust here. It's bust time for Bradley. They've been stuck on 50 for a while. Stuck on a number on a tough home court is not good. Reggie Hall. The lid's still on the bucket. Gilbert blocked away. Rowan, another block. He's close to setting a single season record. It's Belcher for a three. No. Rebound pulled out by Faulkner. Gilbert on the lead, still away. Bradley can't play this tempo, Donnie. Exactly. They're not used to playing this fast paced tempo. And as the clock winds down, they're in a hurry to try and score points, but Southern Illinois' defense is not allowing that. You get that feeling that this is a special night. Roland Roberts is double teamed out to Kent. If he hits it, the place will go crazy. He doesn't miss too many of those, Russ. If he's wide open, he's going to knock it down. Listen to this place. 7-18 to go for the ball game. Timeout, Bradley. 67-50. This is a full timeout. We will keep it here. There will be an additional timeout coming up with the under eight media timeout, but Southern has just started to shoot the lights out here in the second half. For the second half, they are shooting 56%, Donnie, and Southern is limiting Bradley to very, very bad shots and not a lot of good touches down low. You made light of it when the... When the PA came across and Drake was losing, you kind of saw, you saw Southern get a little up for this game even more, and they've been out hustling Bradley on both ends of the ball, and now you see why Southern Illinois leads by 17. 
Bradley cannot play an up-tempo style. Jim Molinari has never played that kind of a style. When he took Northern Illinois to the NCAA tournament back in 91, they did it by playing defense. When he took his Braves to the tournament in 96, it was defense as well. And that time, no defense, Donnie. Kept Williams wide open. Exactly. Like I mentioned before, he doesn't miss too many of those when he's by himself out there. He was out here prior to the ball game shooting around, and while the Saluki Shakers were going through their routine, they had to dodge Kent Williams as he was shooting some jumpers from long range. He is dialed in at the end of the year. He is fighting Kyle Korver for the Player of the Year award. Now comes the discussion as another update comes, and the crowd will tell you the result. And Drake tied at 69. Well, that's kind of a anticlimactic response from the crowd tied up in Omaha 69 apiece between Drake and Creighton but if Southern does not win this league is Kent Williams still your MVP or is it Kyle Corver? well you can make a case for both both have had great seasons and you may think that if Creighton wins the Valley Tournament they might give the edge to Corver but Kent has done his part to be up there as a consideration for the Valley Player of the Year. Cal Corver has been just fantastic for Creighton this year. He's been there everything. Three ball from Robinson, no good. No call on the over the back on Reggie Hall. And the fifth year senior got away with one there. Push off balance, that's an Harrison. At the 659 mark, Southern up by 17, 67 to 50. The dogs are led in scoring by Kent Williams with 22. Roland Roberts is 20. And on the flip side, Danny Granger had big numbers in the first half, but has been limited in the second half, Donnie. Exactly. He's only had, what, one point, two points maybe in the second half, and it's just been the tandem of Kent Williams with his 22 and Roller Roberts with his 20. Two of the big three scoring 20 points for the Slickies tonight. And to complete that thought, 53 points between the big three of Jermaine Dearman, Roland Roberts, and Kent Williams. Philip Gilbert to the line. He missed that. Danny Granger on a rebound. Bradley needs points and in a hurry. Not something they're accustomed to or used to doing. They're accustomed to being down by big numbers this year. It's Marcello Robinson. 22 on the shot clock, 644 as you see for the ball game. Three from Gilbert. Yes, sir. Long range three from there. Their top scorer on their team, but Bradley's only shooting 40% in the second half, which is good, and that's 43% for the game. So Southern Illinois is doing their part to keep them under 45%, where teams who have shot over that mark have beat Southern so far this year. Stetson Harrison, 4-3, no good. Rebound Danny Granger, and the ball pulled away, and into the front court comes Reggie Hall. Philip Gilbert is going to have to be the workhorse here as he is now in the league, the number seven leading scorer, averages close to 14 points per ball game. In this ball game, he has 11, including that last three. He'll create, and a foul, and it's going the other way. They're going to get Heemsburg. The tide is definitely in Southern Illinois' favor right now. Everything is going in the Saluki's favor, and Bradley is just lost. Has no answer to the Southern Illinois offense or defense. Now, in that replay, you can back it up maybe a little bit more. There wasn't that much contact between Heemsburg there. He seemed to have good position. Jim Molinari did not like the call. And to the line for Southern is Stetson Harrison. Stetson for the ball game tonight. Row eight. Has seven points. Six. Section E, row eight. Seat six. James Gillingham will check in on the free throw. And Bradley needs to get more offense out there right now without Gillingham in there. And now Gillingham will sit down. And Gillingham still might be injured. He went down early and went out and hasn't come back in the game yet, so. The foul is the fifth on Heemskirk, and he's fouled out of the ball game. Team foul number eight on Bradley. One and one time for SIU. Harrison to the line, where he has been at 71% this year. In conference games, 66%. The free throw is good. Dogs up by 15. Time is just ticking away on Bradley. And also ticking away to an exciting year and wonderful season for Southern Illinois. It has been a magical season. Free throw rolls good. Timeout. The 
unofficial timeout. We will talk about the run that Southern has had this year when we continue from the arena. A big year for the dogs and a big night tonight. Will it be a championship night? 69-53, SIU with the lead on Bradley. This is Saluki basketball. 72-69, the score from the Civic Odd in Omaha. And the crowd can sense it now. There's under a minute to go. If Creighton loses and Drake pulls off the miracle, the Dogs are Missouri Valley Conference champions. They have done their part tonight, and they have lived a magical season in which nearly beating Illinois, they beat Indiana on a special Saturday afternoon in December. Ranger for three, no good. Rebound pulled down by Joa Tucker. It has been a magical run this year, Donnie, complete with an outstanding tournament in Las Vegas. And they've done everything they've had to do, gone on the road, beaten tough teams on the road, and defended the home court nicely. Exactly. We'll try and go undefeated here at home. 5.32 left. It looks like Salukis will stay undefeated for the season here at SIU Arena. The memory of December the 1st will live forever in the minds of Saluki fans. It was a sellout crowd. Many fans thought that the arena has never been louder than that Saturday afternoon that the Big Ten fell at the hands of the Missouri Valley Conference here in Carbondale. Jermaine Dearman, 15 feet away from the hoop. Out to Belcher, and he traveled. Turned it over. 5-10 to go for the ball game. We should have another update coming shortly. But that Saturday in which Southern knocked off Indiana was a special one for you and I, Donnie, and I know that, that you thought it was, uh, was something that you'll hang on to for the rest of your life as well. Well, definitely. Fireworks here at the SIU Arena, and the crowd loud, and loud, uh, the loudest I've actually ever heard in, in my years here at Southern Illinois, and it was just a wonderful setting, wonderful outing, and I was happy to be a Southern Illinois fan that day. Robinson to Gilbert, 4-3, and he buried it. This one isn't over. It's a 13-point lead, 69-56. Southern has to continue to take care of their business. Exactly. Gilbert continues to do what he can to help lead the Salukis. Transition time for Bradley. Five on one. Joe Tucker to finish. The fans wanted a blocking foul, or rather a charge. Jermaine Dearman fell down hard. Joe Tucker banged up after the bucket. Now Saluki trainer Ed Thompson will attend to Jermaine Dearman. Nope, he's being called back, and Jermaine's all right. He's a tough kid from Indianapolis. Exactly. You don't want to see anyone get injured. The 427 left in the Valley Tournament approaching this weekend. It was five on one, and that time, Bradley beat Southern down the floor. There is a timeout on the floor. It's a 30-second timeout for Southern, and we will keep it here. Looking back at the season that was for Southern Illinois, it started with the win over Belmont, then they went to St. Louis. The way they scheduled at the beginning of the year, Donnie, had St. Louis, Iowa State, George Mason, which was a good road game, and then Cal State Northridge. Each one of those teams has had an uncharacteristically down year, and that could hurt Southern come NCAA tournament selection time. Exactly. They expected those teams to be better, and they expected some Valley teams to be better as well than Indiana State and Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa was, was expected to fight with Southern to the end of the season this year, but they went from first to worst, so to speak, slipping a lot in the Valley standings. It is amazing how far Indiana State has fallen. This is a ball club that was picked in the top four of the Valley. Just ahead of Southern, it was Illinois State, Creighton, Indiana State, then Southern Illinois. But the Sycamores have six points, or rather six wins for the year. When you figure that Keelan Block and Jabril Conti would carry that team, but Keelan Block has been injured for a good part of the year and has finally been back in the last half month of the season. But wins have not resulted from that. 4-13 for the ball game, 69-58, Southern up by 11. You still need to score, Donnie, but you'd like to milk some time off the clock as well. Exactly. There's 11, only up by 11, but still four, four, uh, just under four minutes left, so Southern still in good place, in a good place right now to get this win. But they want to be able to score to stretch the lead. Alternate possession goes Southern's way on the jump ball. We will have an official's timeout. The under four media timeout comes at 356. 69 to 58. SIU up by 11 on the Bradley Braves. Back to the arena in a moment. This is Saluki basketball. By the Missouri Valley Conference. Southern Illinois has increased their shooting percentage. They're at 48% for the ball game to Bradley's 42. 
transition points have gone as well. Here is a final of Creighton and Drake. 73. It's over in Omaha. Creighton has fallen to the mighty Drake Bulldogs. Southern is going to win the Missouri Valley Conference. And Stetson comes out. He got open. He squared his feet up, and he shot the three-pointer. And the Salukis are excited. They are three minutes away, just over, uh, just under four minutes away, rather, from being Valley champs. Ranger got it. All of Southern Illinois rejoice. The Dogs have just increased their chances of being an at-large berth in the NCAA tournament, barring a loss in the Missouri Valley Conference tournament in St. Louis. A foul to the goal. Can you believe that? The Drake Bulldogs, a ball club that has not had good luck on the road in the past 10 years at best. Go to Omaha and knock off Creighton, a ball club that defends their home court so well. Exactly. In a ball game that Dana Altman said they would win. And they lost it at the Civic on tonight, Donnie. Exactly. They don't lose too many games. And going to the replay right here, Jermaine Dearman drove to the hoop and got fouled. But getting back to what I was saying, Creighton does not lose at home. Southern Illinois was fortunate to win there, coming back from 14 down. And now Drake can go there at the end of the season and beat Creighton. What a night for Southern Illinois. Creighton has lost at home twice this year. Now three times. Free throw good. Dogs up by 12. 3.24 to go. You have to imagine that on that Bradley sideline as well, they would love to play spoiler and they would love to play the final 324 as if their lines depended on it. But could the lead be too large? It's a 13 right now. Exactly, and Jim Molinar would like to get his 111th win on the year. The tie, former Suzuki coach Rich Heron for fourth on the all-time Valley wins list. And Rich Heron was a man that guided Southern into the NCAA tournament three consecutive years. Never has been done in the Missouri Valley Conference. Probably never will happen again. Marcello Robinson went to the 10. He's still playing hard. Roland Roberts on a hard foul. Count the bucket. And Gilbert will go to the line to try to put Bradley down by 10. He does. The Braves still have a little fight left in them. Marcello Robinson to the line puts Bradley down 73-63. And there is increased pressure on Bradley's part. Kent Williams into the front court for the Dogs. To Jermaine Dearman, and they'll move the basketball around. Nothing but time now, friends. Nothing but time. Kent Williams grew up a Southern Illinois fan, has yet to get to the NCAA tournament. Wants so desperately to get there as a player. Whistle and a foul on Bradley. Kent will go to the line. He grew up in Mount Vernon. How special do you think this is for the youngster? Oh, exactly, especially when you grew up as a fan of a team and now you get to, get to play for him, and you're 246 away from having one of the best chances of going to the NCAA tournament, you got to be happy. On the inside, he's got to be thinking, just waste time and get this game over with, and they can go to the Missouri Valley tournament as the conference champs. Kent to the line. Now has 23 points for the night. Leads four dogs in double figures. 23 for Kent, 20 for Roland, 13 for Jermaine Dearman, and 11 for Stetson Harrison. Kent Williams for the second try. Got it. It's 12 with 2.44 to go. This place will go crazy if Southern holds on to the win. 2.36 away from craziness. Marcello Robinson lost the handle out of bounds off of Bradley, Southern ball. You know, there was an earthquake they were predicting, Donnie, on that New Madrid fault line, and I think that if Southern holds on to this win tonight, there just might be an eruption of earthquake proportions here in Carbondale tonight. Exactly. This floor might be covered with SIU fans when that buzzer goes off. Bradley implements the full court pressure. Into the front court, stolen away by Danny Granger. Still playing hard, and this is a ball club that wants to improve for the Valley Tournament. 75-65. This is a young squad. Bradley could be the best eight-win team in the nation in the foul. Foul on Faulkner. That will be his fourth. So the Brave from Canada puts the Braves to 10 team fouls, and 
Southern will go to the line to shoot two. Marcus Belcher to the stripe to shoot two. Marcus Belcher at the line for Southern Illinois. The seniors kind of struggled at the end of the season. Offensively. No good by Marcus. But what a what a big win this will be for him in the senior year. Southern Illinois gets to win the Valley title. Free throw is good. Two eleven to go. Into the ball game, Jermaine Dearman for SIU. Sitting down will be Marcus Belcher. Marcus Belcher. Two eleven for a Valley championship. There have been some great players here. Charlie Vaughn in 1960, an All-American. Walt Frazier, Joe Merriweather, Mike Lenn, Greg Sterick. Throw Ashraf Amaya and Chris Carr in there. Tip no good by Granger. Ball tipped out of bounds. It will go Southern's way. 158 to go. Add to the list Roland Roberts and Kent Williams for what they have done this year for SIU. And don't forget Jermaine Dearman as well. He's been a big part of that trio. And Roland will check out get a warm response from the crowd. The students have really taken to the senior from Woodbridge, Virginia, on the Virginia Tech transfer. Williams into the front court, layup no. Dearman couldn't tip it in. Rebound long, taken back by Southern. Only time now, 145 to go for the ball game in a Valley Championship. Dearman, sidestep to the goal, got it. Nice good move by Jermaine. He went one way, then spent the round, got to the basket first, and he was able to put in the two-point bucket. Southern Illinois, can you feel it? Can you feel a Valley Championship? Granger for three, yes. Timeout quickly taken by Bradley. 126 to go for the ball game. It's back to 10. 30-second timeout. We will keep it here. The Braves don't want to make it easy for Southern Illinois. They're trying to keep this score close as much as possible. Maybe try and fight back and make it close at the end, but like you said, with 126 left, Southern is sensing the, turf, the Valley Conference Championship is in their grasp. There will be a lot of maroon and white in St. Louis, and probably more so now with the result of tonight. Southern has traditionally had good turnouts at the old St. Louis Arena and Keele Auditorium, and now at the Sabbath Center in the last couple of years. Had the largest crowd for a championship ball game when they took on Tulsa back in 1995. Southern will play if they win this ball game at noon on Saturday against the winner of the 8-9 ball game the night before. That will be against Bradley and Evansville. Foul on Bradley. Oh, on again, Philip Gilbert. Philip Gilbert. Gilbert so they could foul. see these Braves again Saturday. And the hopefully, Go ahead, Donnie. Well, hopefully they're getting the chance to figure out what they need to do because if they see them again, they should do the exact same thing and hopefully move on in the tournament. Marcus Belcher to the line for Southern. 79-68. This has to be tough for Jim Molinari. The coach that has been at Bradley for now 11 years and has taken the Braves to one NCAA tournament, five NITs, to have the conference clinched against his ball club has to be very tough, especially in a very tough year for him in New York. Exactly. It has to be tough for his team as well. They had Southern Illinois down early, and SIU couldn't figure out what to do against right. the Braves, and all of a sudden they made that comeback, and it's been Bradley who's been unable to answer. Ranger for three. No, nope. his shot has gone flat in the second half, and a foul on Bradley. And surprisingly, some people are leaving this arena. Uh, they want to avoid the earthquake if all possible. And they said it would be a big one. And it could be a big one tonight in Carbondale. See Roland Roberts grabs the rebound right there and quickly gets fouled. They want to put the big man at the line, hope, hoping that he would miss. But Roland's been shooting the free throw shots pretty well tonight. Hopefully he can continue that trend, that trend rather, and that'll be good going into the Valley Tournament. The big man is now seven of nine from the line. Without a doubt his best performance from the line so far this year. What else is going to happen tonight? Miracles are happening everywhere. Drake with the win over Creighton. Roland Roberts, 7 of 9, 8 of 10 from the line. He just got a backpedal. <laughs> what a fun night at the arena, folks. Gilbert, desperation three. Yes. He's a good ball player. He is a good ball player, Philip Gilbert. 82-71 the score, 101 for the ball game. 30-second timeout taken by Bradley. Gilbert just continues to keep Bradley into this game. 
It won't go away, but Southern still leads by 11 with a minute left, and they have to be feeling pretty good about their chances of coming away with a victory. Bradley is a ball club that has struggled the last couple of years. They were in the NIT last year in a year that they played over their heads, it appeared. They went, they went to the National Invitation Tournament, played Detroit in the first round. Here's a replay of Phil Gilbert stroking it from 23 feet. Nice range there. Keeping the Braves in it, but Super Coach Bruce Weber giving his guys instructions on what to do for this last 61 seconds of the ball, ball game. And this ball club has to be thinking, wow, we could be Valley champs in just over a minute. 68-49 was the score last year. Detroit beat Bradley in the NIT tournament. That was a very good Detroit ball club that ended a very good year for Bradley. They went 19 and 12. Southern right now can improve to 24 wins on the year. 24 and six they would be with the win tonight. One minute remaining time for fouling and time for a foul on Reggie Hall. Or will they get Philip Gilbert? They get Reggie Hall, fifth year senior out of Chicago. And he has fouled out of the ball game. Go ahead, Donnie. They'll put the freshman Darren Brooks on the line and he'll have to knock down a pair. He's been Mr. Reliable off the bench, so hopefully he can knock down these two and kind of stretch the game even further away from Bradley. To the line is Darren Brooks. He has a very bright future ahead of him. The redshirt freshman out of St. Louis's Jennings High School makes the first free throw. 83-71, and this is nice. Jason Ward in the ballgame for SIU. The senior that has played through five seasons, Bruce Weber said he got here before I got here. And now he's out there on the floor, a very valuable part of the ball club to play out the final minute of a championship ball game. Exactly. It's always good to see the senior get in. It's a playing time at the end of the year, and wow, what a feeling it's got to be for him as well. Been here for five years, and now he'll get a chance to go with the team and ride this wave of success this year. He has gone through a lot through five years. 54 seconds to go. It's Gilbert for three. Nope, short. Legs have gone away for Bradley. Jim Molinari wanted to foul on the rebound, didn't get it, and I don't think Jim Molinari's going to get a call. At the end of this ball game, Brian Hogan to the ball game for the Braves. He's their second senior. Reggie Hall checked out of the ball game with fouls. 45 seconds to a championship, Donnie. And the crowd's letting the Salukis know. Bradley will not foul. Good move by Jim Molinari. There has been so much success in Southern Illinois. And oh, how this region needs the dogs to be good on the floor in basketball. 23 seconds to a championship. Timeout taken by Southern. They're going to they're going to bring in some substitutions off the bench. It's going to be a quick 30-second timeout. And now David Carney will check back into the ball game or check into the ball game for the first time. David McLeod into the ball game for the dogs. 22 seconds to a championship. seconds now it's Gilbert on the baseline bucked away by Ward two seconds one second four tenths of a second left inbounds it's over it's over it's over Southern Illinois your 2002 Valley champs it's amazing what a win for Southern Illinois here at the SIU Arena. Doing what they needed to do to take care of business, beating Bradley and Creighton losing at home unexpectedly to Drake. And now we the conference champs. Look at the fans celebrate with the Salukis. What a sight, Russ. Final score, 84-73, Southern Illinois.
The Salukis are the Missouri Valley Conference regular season champions for the first time since 1992. The Dogs are MVC champions. What a year it's been. 24 and 6. Southern Illinois is number one in the Missouri Valley Conference. Thank you, Drake. Thank you, Kurt Kanaski. What a sight this is on the floor at the arena. Take it in, Southern Illinois. So much success in this building. And another chapter is added tonight. They played as if they were champions at the beginning of the ball game when nobody thought that Drake could go up to Omaha and win. And the Bulldogs did. Get ready, St. Louis. There is a caravan of Saluki fans on the way. Here's Brent Horseman with Bruce Weber. Thanks, thanks guys. I'm Coach Weber. Coach, how are you feeling? Uh, we just feel so happy. I mean, there's no doubt we've been fight, fighting to be the champions. That's been our goal the whole year. And, and I guess we there's a miracle happened out at Creighton. I never thought it would happen, but you got to give Drake credit. So now we're the number one seed. We're co-champions. It gives us another, another uh, thing to hang our head on for the NCAA tournament. So I'm so proud of the kids. We hung in there. We battled. Bradley played their butts off. But our kids made it up plays when it counted. So, so it's a heck of a thing to win a championship. And that's what we've been fighting to since last spring. Okay, thanks, Coach. You'll have go fun cutting nets down. Back to you, Russ and uh, Donnie. Good luck getting out of that mob, Brent. Dogs win it 84 to 73 over the Bradley Braves. Southern Illinois is number one in the Missouri Valley Conference. They are champions, Donnie. Exactly right. What a night. Bradley came in here trying to play upset and basically spoil the fun of SIU. And Southern Illinois probably didn't think that, that Drake could go there, like, like Bruce Weber said, and beat Creighton on their home floor. But like you said, miracles do happen. And it's not the USA hockey team back in 1980, but it sure feels like it right now, Russ. Southern Illinois just has to be ecstatic that you're going in as the number one seed into the Valley Tournament. This is the ball club that beat Indiana, nearly beat Illinois, had a midseason low, went to Southwest Missouri State, lost, went to Wichita, lost, but is undefeated in this building. The building that's seen a lot of wins and a lot of success. And Southern, and a Southern Illinois boy, Kent Williams, has marched to the top of this conference. Who cares if it's a down year? Who cares if the RPI in this league is 12? Southern Illinois has just added another chapter to an illustrious history. Winning 84 to 73 over the Bradley Braves. Winning the Missouri Valley Conference regular season title. They will be the number one seed of the Arch Madness at Savis Center in St. Louis this upcoming weekend. They will take on the winner of the 8-9 ball game that will take place on Friday night. That will be between either Bradley and Evansville, Drake and Evansville, or any of the bottom four teams within this league. It's been a crazy night in the conference. But one thing is for sure, Southern played consistent after the first 10 minutes of the ball game, Donnie. Bradley shot hot. Southern was incredibly cold. Southern started to heat it up and thus won the ball game. Exactly. Like you mentioned, Bradley came out. They were the ones that set the tone. It was a slow-paced game early on. But then Southern Illinois kind of turned it around after a couple timeouts. They came out and played the game that they wanted to with the up-tempo style. And Bradley had no answer for it. Southern was able to run up and down the court. Bradley couldn't hang with them. They were tired. You saw them hovering over and holding their, their hands and hips. And you see... The Salukis are the ones that are climbing up the ladder and cutting down the net because they're the conference champs. Thanks in part to Drake. I'm sure Bruce Weber will be singing, sending Kirk and Askey squad a thank you letter. Totals for the ball game. Kent Williams at 24 on 9 of 16 shooting. Bruce Weber implored him to do more with less shots. Well, he took a lot of shots tonight, but hit nine of them. He had 24. Rowan Roberts on his night, senior night, the senior from Woodbridge, Virginia, and Virginia Tech University at 22 points. Jermaine Deerman had 15, 11 for Stetson Harrison, 6 for Marcus Belcher. Southern shot for a ball club, 49%. Bradley shot 
on the rebounding statistic, Bradley out-rebounded Southern Illinois 39 to 29. However, end result, a Southern victory, 84 to 73. Bradley was led in scoring, 22 points by Danny Granger. 17 points for Philip Gilbert and 10 points for James Gillingham. They cut down the Nets at the arena, which has not been done here for quite some time. What a night. What a night. And now the emotion has to be in Southern Illinois' favor heading into the Valley Tournament. They have to be the favorite to win the tournament, Russ. Well, they've defeated the number two team in the conference twice this year. They swept great on the road at the Civic Odd. And here in Carbondale, Mike Trude comes over, flashes a thumbs up. Mike Trude, the usual color, rather play-by-play -play man, has fought with, it, uh, with illness at the end of this year. And I know how much this means to him and how much it would mean to him to call this ball game tonight, but illness has kept him out. And Many thanks to him for allowing me to assume the duties on a very special night in Carbondale. Brad Korn climbs the ladder. The redshirt sophomore from Plano. The Reaper will rip down the nets. 1992, the last time a regular season championship for Southern Illinois. Last time they were in the NCAA tournament was a loss in Austin, Texas at the hands of Syracuse. In a hard-fought ball game that Southern eventually lost 96 to 92. The last NCAA tournament win came back in 1977, a Sweet 16 year where Southern defeated Arizona and lost to Wake Forest. The crowd wants Roland Roberts. And here comes the big man from Virginia. Someone better make sure the ladder doesn't break with Roland on it. What a difficult couple of college years it's been for Roland Roberts, but how sweet it must be for the senior to come to Carbondale, become appreciated by a whole new set of students and a whole region that really just took to the big guy and has been a leading factor along with Ken Williams in the championship season for Southern Illinois, which they win the ball game 84 to 73 over the Bradley Braves. A very deserving conference championship for Southern Illinois. They played more games than Creighton, three more games than Creighton this year, had more wins than Creighton, but it appeared the Blue Jays were going to go into the Valley Tournament as the number one seed, and Southern Illinois just finds a way. They find their own magic, as Bruce Weber calls it. Found their own magic and found their own number one ticket into this tournament. Generations of Saluki fans will appreciate this. We are newcomers to the area, Donnie. Perspective. There have been a lot of Saluki fans that have been here a lot longer than we have. But for generations, this is a special evening in Carbondale. There will be a maroon and white caravan going to St. Louis this weekend for the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament. And yes, Southern Illinois is number one in the Missouri Valley Conference. Let the echoes ring. The dogs are on top. 84-73, to 73, Southern Illinois defeats Bradley. Our thanks to our crew here at the arena. Now for Donnie Tillman, I'm Russ Eisenstein. Go crazy, Southern Illinois. The dogs are number one. Good night from Carbondale.